How about that? A dog sled expedition across the frozen Arctic. It's the latest journey in our Planet in Peril series that Anderson's been reporting on for 360. Leading the team, one of the richest people on Earth, Sir Richard Branson. The mission, to document the melting away of the top of the world. Not in maps and measurements, but, as Anderson found out, in real time. Well, we're on our way, and um, we've um, <laughs> been traveling um, for, for the first few hours. A uh, beautiful day, and um, uh, these are our dogs over there, and it looks like I'm off. <laughs> Virgin Atlantic CEO Richard Branson and his 21-year-old son Sam joined part of a 1,200-mile expedition across Baffin Island in the Canadian Arctic. We're privileged enough to enjoy the Arctic in, in its sheer beauty, and... Um, uh, and also to record the Arctic and its sheer beauty so that future generations will be able to see uh, what, what there used to be and what was lost. Branson is known for his environmentalism. He's trying to make his airline more energy efficient than others. He's here to film a documentary with the group Global Warming 101 to offer a first-hand account of climate changes. We've been very lucky with the weather. I mean, we woke up to this gorgeous day. Um, obviously, <laughs> the, the problem about good weather is... Um, is that you know is the, is the effect it's having on the environment around us? We've got these beautiful glaciers which you can see in the distance, um, but um, they they're being depleted quite fast. Along the way, Branton and his group saw polar ice caps and glaciers once mighty now melting. Now we saw the Barnes ice cap, which uh, uh, very few people have seen. It's it's absolutely and utterly magnificent, and it's um, must be about 100 miles long by 50 miles wide and it goes right back to the Ice Age. The natives who have lived in the Arctic for hundreds of years, called Inuits, told Branson they once could see this ice cap from their village, but no longer. Another side, sign of global warming. Good job. For a man used to traveling in big, fast jets, a journey by dog sled presents a challenge. Well, Addison, we do a lot of running after the sled. The terrain is difficult, even for the dogs. Uh, we finished going down the most beautiful field uh, you can imagine uh, and then we crossed what must have been a sort of a, a magical ice river um, and you know the dogs had to, to struggle and fight their way across uh, one of the dogs didn't make it across and, and um, uh, the Inuit cut the rope and let him go hopefully he'll turn back up in uh, the camp later on tonight sleeping here is tough with almost 24 hours of sunlight this time of year but at one point, bed. Sam has a dream. And then I dreamt that I got, I was at a dinner, having a dinner with friends in a tent, and then I got attacked by a polar bear. <laughs> so I think there's definitely relations to real things in dreams. A dream or a premonition? A few nights later... We heard the dogs barking in a really irregular way, and one of the guys shouting polar bear. Um, and you don't really joke about that out here. Um, so we all came running out of our tents and sure enough there was a polar bear about 100 feet from camp. Sam is told it's not such an unusual sight anymore. The sea ice has retreated back instead of being 50 miles out, you know, freezing, it's, it's about 10 miles and so there's more polar bears in a, in a more confined space, um, so that's why they're being sighted more. In the end, after hundreds of miles, Branson says he leaves with a better appreciation for the beauty that is at risk of disappearing. Take a look at the, the Arctic as it is today, as it still is today, and let's hope it remains like this. And if you're wondering where Anderson is tonight, he's on his way to Greenland right now. We'll see him live from there tomorrow night. Coming up here, 